This is Daniel Tal from Placemaker, and I'm going to demonstrate Placemaker version 3, how to import the various data that we have available with our new version, and also talk about the credit system when you import in data. So all the different data sets, some of them you can see here, include buildings, aerials, roads, paths, water, and the one I'm most excited about is terrain, and I'll demonstrate that as well. We also have our 3D city mesh import and our Ecopia smart site, which is a survey-like import as well. And I'll demonstrate those in, in a series of videos. And just as a reminder, we have two ways to access the data in Placemaker. You can do a pay-as-you-go system or a subscription. And I'm going to talk about that when I import in the various data sets here. But you can also see there's a link to a separate video on how the credit system works, how you purchase it, and how it impacts the data sets you're importing into SketchUp. I'm going to demonstrate by importing in a location and an aerial into, play, into SketchUp using Placemaker. And obviously that's the key to starting any imports for your particular location. I'm going to go to View, Toolbars, and I'm going to activate the Placemaker menus right there and then from there I have placemaker dialog which is the import data option but I want to go to create geosurface I'm going to click on that and I've already kind of navigated to the Dallas Fort Worth area and one new feature in our import option is you can enable a large area input if I uncheck this that's the standard size you typically can import into SketchUp which I think is roughly two square miles or two kilometers, I'm not sure. But if I, if I do enable large areas, this is roughly 10 kilometers by 10 kilometers or 6.2 by 6.2 miles. But I'm not gonna do that whole area. That's gonna be for another time. So I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see the preview we have of the high resolution aerial. And I'm gonna bring in a little portion of downtown Dallas. I'm actually going to make this smaller. So I'm going to click select area, narrow this down, and that should be a good size right there. And I'm going to select import area. And it brings in the location and a low resolution aerial. Now that I have the location imported, I'm going to import in an aerial, high resolution aerial. I go to my placemaker dialog and my option here is called import aerial and these are the import aerial options and there's two options here there's map box and near map near map is high res super super high resolution aerials I'll show you that in this video for the United States and Canada while map box is global so for most places in the world and it has pretty good resolution for a lot of locations. So we're going to start with Mapbox. I have the map data type is satellite versus a street, which is just a map. And then the zoom option of max, high, medium, or low. We're going to keep it at max and try that. I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to click on import imagery. And you'll see your first dialog. So it's showing you a preview of the area it's going to import in. Notice it says credits required 98. So that's if you have a pay as you go system where you just buy credits. That's how much all these are going to cost versus credits required for subscribers is 49. And this is a high credit cost. Um, our aerials tend to be or have the highest credit costs versus our other data sets have a significantly reduced cost, like from ranging from 1 to 10 to 20. So aerials are a little bit more, but also you can just, again, see if, if you do pay-as-you-go, it's 98. If you're a subscriber, it's roughly half that. You confirm the order, and, it's, and I'm going to let this run. In some instances, for if you're a subscriber, the data is also free, and again, I'll demonstrate that in, in these various videos. So the import took under a minute. And I'm going to zoom in here, and you can see the level of detail. 
If I go to Window Preferences and I turn on, go to OpenGL, which is right here, and I select Use Maximum Texture Size, this actually might improve the performance a little bit and make it a crisper aerial or not. My recommendation is to actually keep that setting off. You can see the difference right there. Preferences, I'll turn it back on. But if you want a crisper resolution and, and you're in North America, I'm going to show you what to do next. And this is pretty good resolution. But if you want to even get to a higher level of resolution and you're in the United States, North America, um, go to View, Hidden Geometry. You'll see these hidden geometry lines. Select the aerial. Right click on it and say Unlock. And then go to Edit Group. And now we're in the aerial group. And I'm going to select these four tiles. And now I'm going to select Near Map, Maximum Resolution, and say Import Imagery. It'll bring up a tile, a dialog box with credit uses again. This is good amount of credits, but Near Map is super high resolution. So credits require 250 if you pay as you go, or credits required for subscribers is 200. I'm going to confirm the order and it's now going to import in a higher resolution set. You can see it's a tighter set of tiles and it's overlaying it directly into here. Let's zoom in and look at the results. That's a much better level of detail. If we go to the edges, you can see the difference between the map box high resolution and then adding another level of detail to this using near map which gives you a super super high resolution aerial all the way down you can see this landscape pattern and that's available in North America but map box again is global and in terms of credit use tends to be a little bit higher using uh, imports for aerials. I'm going to demonstrate the other data sets in the next set of videos that show those costs and how they work as well.